You're always sending us something that's going to poison our land and poison our water. They tried to put a liquid fertilizer plant right out here. A landfill right across the street from a black school. They're going to have this wood pellet plant that's coming there. Human sludge that was going to be converted into organic fertilizer. Coal ash dumps. And now there's the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. It's going to run through eight counties, as I understand. And a lot of those places, I think I hadn't really realized this until a couple weeks ago, that really do have a history of environmental hazards being sort of put in their way. We want to know when are we going to get something that is worthwhile. The $7 billion Atlantic Coast Pipeline, which would carry shale gas from West Virginia down to North Carolina. Gary Grant lives in Halifax County, not too far from the route of the proposed pipeline. Grant's parents were part of a resettlement created in 1935 by Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal to match rural families with uncultivated land for farming. Tillery is one of 13 black farming homesteads created nationwide, and the only one in North Carolina. Today, according to Grant, about 6,000 of the original 10,000 acres of farmland are still in the hands of the original owner's descendants. Yeah, that's a lot compared to you know, other areas. The fact that you have a bunch of black folk who are independent landowners, it just changes the whole arena, questioning why, where power structures are concerned. Tillery has held on to its land despite decades of racist agricultural lending practices that stripped land from black farmers across the country. Over 66,000 black farmers were routinely denied USDA farm loans or forced to wait, to wait and wait, for loan approvals much longer than non-minorities. The first foreclosures came in 1976. In 1999, those practices were the subject of the largest discrimination settlement in civil rights history. Ultimately, over a billion dollars has been distributed to black farmers and their descendants. The attack on the region's land hasn't just been over agriculture. In recent decades, it's been about the potential of polluting neighbors moving in. Just west of Halifax County in Warren County, is where the environmental justice movement began. The marchers then sat in the road, and the patrol began arresting them and placing them on a jail bus. In the 1980s, low-income and black communities protested the planned siding of a toxic landfill. It was the first time in American history that citizens were jailed attempting to stop the construction of an environmental hazard. Communities in eastern North Carolina are still fighting to protect low-income residents and people of color from polluting industries disproportionately placed there. On the first whiff, you get a headache. I mean, just bam. In 1996, 60 Minutes interviewed Gary Grant about his work trying to keep hog farms out of his community. Tillery in Halifax County is poor, black, and rural. He says a prime target for hog expansion. The pollution generated by these operations can contaminate groundwater or cause respiratory diseases and increase the risk of cancer for people living nearby. Grant helped organize protests to put a stop to it. They worked. Halifax County passed strict laws regarding hog farming, which is big business in North Carolina. Nothing like what's down in Duplin and Sampson County. And uh, they actually have more hogs than they have people in those counties. In recent years, Grant's focused on a new target, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. Dominion has announced a joint venture with Duke Energy, Piedmont Natural Gas, and AGL Resources. Duke Energy and Dominion Energy own nearly all of the pipeline and are two of the largest energy providers in the U.S. Their pipeline is designed to carry natural gas from West Virginia to North Carolina. A path has been partially cleared and some of the pipe is already in the ground. Pipelines can threaten health, safety, and water quality. In North Carolina, seven of the eight counties along the proposed route have a higher rate of poverty than the state median. Those same counties, they also have a higher percentage of people of color. And according to a University of North Carolina study, the state's African-American communities are nearly twice as likely to live within a mile of a registered EPA polluter than the average North Carolina community. We have a, a great risk of cancer, people dying with cancer. Uh, respiratory infections, you know. You die a slow death because of something that you have nothing to do with. Belinda Joyner lives 20 miles down the road from Gary Grant, and the two talk pretty often. He's a fighter, he's been a fighter, he know a lot of people, so if I come up on something that I really don't understand, I know what to do, I say, hey Gary, I need you. What is it, Belinda? And that's how we do it. 
Joyner leads the concerned citizens of Northampton County, taking on potentially polluting projects, like in 2018 when they helped stop a proposed coal ash landfill. She and Grant also combined forces to reach out to their neighbors to keep them informed about meetings and forums where the community can make clear how it feels about projects like the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. They've marched against it, protested at the state capitol, and gone door to door. And the last time that I was here, the big structure right straight through the woods there wasn't even here. Hello there, how are you? I'm a little bit cold. Dorothy Winters lives in Richmond, Virginia, but often travels a few hours south to take care of her childhood home. One of the compressor stations that will keep natural gas flowing through the massive pipeline is being built across the road from the house. Grant's been trying to track her down for a while. This is the lady we've been looking for for two years. What? <laughs> pipeline developers wanted to put the natural gas pipeline through her property. She said no, but the compressor station is still going in. Compressor stations are registered EPA polluters. Day to day, the operation of these stations can release pollutants that can increase the likelihood of asthma, cancer, and other conditions for those exposed. They run at all hours of the day, and they're also at risk of blowing up. But I don't want the money. I just no. wish it was stopped. It's always been peaceful here, and it was a place of refuge for me to just come, you know, but just like they came in here and they just took over. Winter's father told her that she should always keep the property in the family, but she wasn't sure how to fight back. Well, how do I get to learn when these meetings are scheduled? But oh, I need your phone number sure. yeah, if you don't mind. Yes. So that uh, yes. when we have meetings. Yeah, and that was another thing. Even experienced organizers like Grant and Joyner have struggled to engage folks to fight the multi-billion dollar project. And I feel that a lot of people in the beginning didn't take it serious. And then when they saw what was actually happening, it was like, oh my God. The first difference would be that they were actually offering people money. It's just a poor area. And someone comes along and says, I'm going to give you $5,000 right now. Well, you start thinking what you can do with $5,000. Some people in the community say they're optimistic about the prospect of economic development. And others, they just aren't that concerned. Unless it's affecting them, they really hadn't made any comment. In most cases, landowners have agreed to easements, but when residents don't agree to sell, Atlantic Coast Pipeline developers have threatened to take property through eminent domain. Ronnie Locke, the fire chief in the town of Enfield in Halifax County, did not agree to sell. We felt like we were pushed to the corner, and then they want to throw eminent domain at you. It's not an angle like, like this. The proposed route goes through the property where his son and grandchildren live. A pipeline less than 300 feet from his son's house means a depressed property value. Being in the fire department, I know what natural gas can do, and I know what happens with explosions, and I do know that accidents happen. I don't want it next to my, my son and grandchildren. The Atlantic Coast Pipeline was set to be in service this year, but now its fate is uncertain. Construction has halted since several key permits were revoked after environmental organizations filed lawsuits over the proposed route threatening endangered species and cutting through national forests. The longer the delay, the more the project costs. Up to $5 billion. $5.5 billion. Now the company projects a total cost of $7 billion to $7.5 billion. What's a realistic plan B that you could think another of? Another project. We would have to come up with another project. That's Lynn Good, CEO of Duke Energy. She and her partners at the other utility companies have made the case that this pipeline is necessary to lower electricity prices and lower greenhouse gas emissions by phasing out coal. But continuing to build out natural gas infrastructure will still result in enough greenhouse gas emissions to push global warming past the point where scientists warn will bring catastrophic effects of climate change. There's also an extra incentive for these companies to build pipelines. Most of my life, I thought of large utility companies as actually being in the energy business. They're really not. They're in the construction business. The utility business just allows them to sell the construction projects. The construction projects are actually where their profit is made. When an energy company gets the federal government to grant it a permit to build an interstate pipeline, it can get up to 14% return for developing that project. In the case of the Atlantic Coast Pipeline, the utilities can pass the costs onto their customers.
An energy industry expert testified that the Atlantic Coast Pipeline would cost ratepayers in Virginia roughly an extra $2 billion. When asked for a comment, a representative from Dominion disputed that estimate. Still, nearly all of the company's projections show no growth in its customers' demand for natural gas between 2019 and 2033. I pay Dominion Power every month for my light bill. So we don't have anybody else to get lights from. So what are you going to do? And then, like I said, they're going to take that money and pay for a pipeline that I'm never going to benefit from. While there's definitely money in the creation of the pipeline, land easements, tax revenue, and construction work, towns along the route often don't get those specialized jobs. ACP manager Brittany Moody admits that only a small number of jobs will remain once construction is completed. I'm thinking in the low 20s, there's not that many permanent jobs that come out of it. I'm actually the chairman of the Halifax County Economic Development Commission. The county will probably collect taxes on it coming through the county. But uh, as far as hiring people locally, I don't know of any. Halifax and Northampton residents recognize the reality on the ground. A small, aging rural county needs economic development. But they're skeptical about these terms. You know, we're tired of being victimized and uh, we're tired of having our property values constantly uh, diminished besides the health risks long term. I'm not against the pipeline, but I am against the way that they're doing things. They're looking to the future for industry and economic development, and I've got to look for the future of my children and my father. People like Gary Grant and Belinda Joyner are continuing to organize to keep the pipeline out of their communities. And it's a fight, and then we jump in the fight. And they always say, a poor frog that can't praise your own pond. Right now, I don't know any place I'd rather be than right here where I am. And if we have to fight, we have to fight, and sometimes we're going to win and sometimes we're going to lose, so. You either become committed to it or you just say, to hell with it. We were successful in fighting off the corporate hog industry. Tried to put a liquid fertilizer plant out here. We fought that off. Northampton County, they voted out every county commissioner who voted to bring the uh, coal ash landfill. Gary Grant and him, uh, Reverend Barbara, walk the pipeline. Fighting corporate America is just difficult. I'm thinking that we're going to stop it. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping. That is never too late. Um, even though some people look at it as a done deal, but it's not over until it's over. And that's what I'm hoping that we can stop it because, like I say, why pay for something that we're not going to benefit from and then put our lives in harm's way because somebody else want to prosper. So I'm believing that we're going we're gonna to stop.